What is an acronym? An acronym is when we take the first letter out of each word in a company name, organization name, product, saying, or phrase and use the first letters instead of saying the whole thing. Many companies go by an acronym instead of their full name. Who's ever heard of international business machines? Probably not very many people, but we all know IBM. There are many sayings in business that have been shortened to save time and because they're used frequently. If you want something done quickly, you can tell someone to do it as soon as possible. But you're more likely to say ASAP or even ASAP. Some acronyms have become so common almost no one uses the long version anymore. If you see an alien spaceship in the sky, you're unlikely to say, I think I just saw an unidentified flying object. You'll probably say, I just saw a UFO. Social events have their own acronyms. If you're invited to a party where they won't be supplying the alcohol and they want you to know that, there probably isn't enough room on the invitation for the phrase, bring your own beer, but you will see BYOB. And if at that party there's a special list to get in, it wouldn't be the very important person list, it would be the VIP list instead. Computers probably have the most acronyms. You will probably never hear anyone say, I have four gigabytes of random access memory. They're much more likely to say, I have four gigs of RAM. But perhaps the internet has even more. If you're chatting on the net and need to get something from the kitchen, you wouldn't type, I'll be right back. You'd use the acronym BRB instead. And if later in that chat, your friend tells you something very funny, you're probably not going to type in laughing out loud to show that you thought it was hilarious. LOL is what you'd use. Okay, so we're going to look at organizations and articles. And in order to do that, we'll have to get some organizations up on the screen. So, first we have the trade guys, then the world heritage guys, then the news guys, the wildlife guys, the banking guys, the spy guys, two government guys, the health guys, the space guys, the military guys, and the oil guys. Now remember, what we're going to look at here is for organizations only. This stuff does not apply to companies that are also acronyms. So which of these organizations use the and which do not? I think everyone knows how to say this one, as we all hear it every time we watch or listen to the BBC. The interesting thing is that the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, is a quasi-governmental organization. Quasi means kind of or sort of, so it uses the. Well, NBC, ABC, and CNN, which are also TV networks, don't use the because they are companies. Can you guess which of the remaining organizations don't use the? One of them is NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. It doesn't use the and is pronounced as if it is a word. Can you see the pattern yet? Let's look at another organization that uses the. The CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, and another one that doesn't, NATO the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So what's the secret? Let's say a few more to see if you can figure it out. The EU, the European Union, and the UN, the United Nations, are both governmental bodies. Then we have UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, which is also a governmental organization. Figured it out yet? If the acronym can be said as a word, then it is said that way without the. On the other hand, if the acronym cannot be pronounced as a word, then the is used and the acronym is spelled out. The rest of them should be easy to say now. The IMF, the International Monetary Fund, the WWF, the World Wildlife Fund, the WTO, the World Trade Organization, and OPEC, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. That leaves us with the WHO, the World Health Organization. But wait, we can pronounce that one. Who? Sometimes the word the acronym produces may be confusing. Imagine this conversation. So who do you work for? Who? No, I want to know who you work for. I told you. Who? So in the interest of understanding, the World Health Organization as known as the WHO. Most of us learn that when the word after an indefinite article, A or N, begins with a vowel, the vowels are A, E, I, O, and U, we should use an, and that we should use a for the consonants, all the other letters. This is not exactly true. It's not the letters a, e, i, o, and u that we should be looking for. It's their sounds. This becomes especially important when talking about acronyms. How many letters of the alphabet do you think start with a vowel sound? More than five? Let's find out. 
an A, a B, a C, a D, an E, an F, a G, an H, an I, a J, a K, an L, an M, an N, an O, a P, a Q, an R, an S, a T, a U, a V, a W, an X, a Y, and a Z. Wow! Twelve letters of the alphabet start with a vowel sound. That's almost half of them. And the amazing thing is that U isn't one of them. It begins with a Y sound, while letters like F and S begin with a E sound. So let's now look at using these articles and acronyms in practice. If you need money, you go to an ATM, an automatic teller machine. Of course, this starts with the letter A, and we use an. Next, we have a DVD, a digital video disc, or a digital versatile disc. The letter D is pronounced with a consonant sound, and so it uses the article A. Here's where things start to get a bit tricky. As I mentioned before, the letter F begins with a vowel sound, and would be pronounced with the article an. So if an FBI agent, that's a Federal Bureau of Investigations agent, ever comes to your door, you'd know how to tell all your friends about it. Of course, the letter I is pronounced with a vowel sound, and if you're watching this, you have an IP address, an internet protocol address, which is kind of like your computer's telephone number on the internet. If you spend a lot of time in school, you might have an MBA, a Master of Business Administration, and you'd better say this one right, or it might not sound like you have one. In Europe, a text message is also known as an SMS, which stands for Short Message Service. The letter S is another consonant that is pronounced with a vowel sound. Here now is the U, which is a vowel, but isn't pronounced with an AN when spoken as a letter, so all that data you carry around is on a USB stick. Another letter that definitely doesn't use the article AN is the letter V, and who wouldn't want to be a VIP, a very important person? And finally, we have X, the last letter that is pronounced with a vowel sound. So if you break your arm, you'll need an X-ray. Let's review what we've learned in this lesson. First, we looked at organizations which are acronyms and how to say them. When saying organizations which are acronyms, if the acronym cannot be pronounced, then we use the and spell out the acronym, the BBC. And if it can be pronounced, we say it as it is, without the, NASA. Next, we looked at acronyms and which indefinite article, A or AN, to use when saying them. If the letter used has a consonant sound, we use A, a DVD. But if the letter used has a vowel sound, we use AN, an MBA. The main thing to remember here is that a lot of letters in the alphabet start with a vowel sound. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments. Be sure to check back to our YouTube channel for more lessons, and visit our website at www.storyandbirch.com.